Oh, well, there, there we go. There's an indigenous uh, foot. This is a foot of a native from that region in another ethnographic paper, physical anthropology paper. You can see that it illustrates very nicely the very splayed appearance of this habitually unshod individual, never having worn shoes. The, the foot is very flat, very mobile, um, and uh, splayed toes, and a fair gap there between the first and second digits. But let's go back here then. You can see that there's a lot of slippage here in the toes. So this does not give us a good outline of the toe, the toe pad, or the individual stems. There's an initial contact, but then this has been translated back here quite a ways. You know, so the toe's about there, and this one is about here. And, you know, you can see the pads. Notice the kind of teardrop shape here. And then this would be even more suggestive of possibly a claw. So that would be a telltale sign of something perhaps other than hominid. So some of the things we would look at, the size of proportions, the configuration of the heel, notice that extrusion, its placement, which would say something about the stiffness or flexibility of the foot, whether there's an arch or not, the length and configuration of the toes, whether they're arrayed in an in a, a inclined toe row, as in a hominid or hominoid, or if they're more parabolic in disposition like a bear, is there any evidence of hair in that mud? Uh, and and just, you can oh, we'll go back in a minute. Claws versus nails. Are we looking at a left or a right? I'm going to educate you a little bit, those of you who don't know about bear anatomy. Okay, so let's just look at some more angles. Here's some more pictures. Okay, so there you can kind of get a better sense, too, of the extrusion, its uh, relief. Uh, Dr. Viet didn't quite comprehend, I guess, that feature. He, he talked about this unusual characteristic of the Ngoi Rung having wavy bottoms to their feet. But, you know, it's not. It's, a, it's an extrusion artifact. You can see it here. Here's some close-up of the toes. And so you can see what I mean by, you know, here we have the, this toe is pretty well outlined. You know, but then up here there's a lot more room for slippage, and especially in the big toe, there's some translation that's taken place here. So that means that this contour probably is a little bit deceiving. Uh, but then again, is this a claw mark here? Or is it just a fracture in the mud like this fracture over here? Well, I'm not sure. You know, this looks like it could be a claw, but maybe it's just a long nail. You know, uh, if you've seen some primates, uh, I'll show, I think I have in here an example of an orangutan life form cast that has rather long claws. And this, this is probably taken from a, not claws, rather long nails. The life cast is almost certainly made from a captive orang, which, uh, you know, hasn't worn down its nails through normal activity. Then there's this heel, and the heel looks a little strange. The outline is just a little odd. There's this irregular kind of jog here, and then, you know, there's this extrusion, but then there's this taper over here, and that could be indi indicative of an arch that's just then been obscured secondarily by this extrusion artifact that's lapped over it. One individual who looked at this, at a, what I discussed in a presentation, said, I'll bet those are made by sandals. Now, these are called Ho Chi Minh sandals. They're made out of tire treads, and they're tires that are worn down to till they're bald, and then they cut out the sandals. But the, the one thing to note, that this is a pretty typical construction pattern, and you see that the straps then are just pulled in through small holes, small slits, where the tension of the rubber holds them in place. So we'd expect to see some artifact there, unless and or, or some very poorly fitted sandals with the toes sticking over the edge. And then he, he suggested, well, maybe, maybe that front half is, is a bare forepaw, and that unusual heel is a, is a sandal. Well, then, you know, you, when you start multiplying explanations, and we're violating the principle of parsimony, and, and yes, that may be true, but we need to first falsify the simplest explanation. Okay? Parsimony doesn't say that the simplest explanation will always be right, it just says that you know, science progresses by nullifying a hypothesis. We really can't prove anything because you can't possibly test all possible situations. That's what falsification means. So we set up the simplest hypothesis and try to pull a leg out from under it. And if we can do that, then we move on to one that's a little more complicated. And we keep doing that until we can't falsify it. And we, we settle on that hypothesis as our working model for the time being until more data comes 
But what are the other possible candidates? You know, I've alluded to things like claws and, and tufts of hair between the toes, possibly, things like that. Well, bear is obviously the other possibility. So in this region, we have the Asiatic black bear, the moon bear. And here's a close-up of its hind foot. Notice the very tapered heel. Notice the parabolic disposition of the toes. Notice this triplet, three central toes. And of course, notice these long claws, even on the hind paw. Uh, oftentimes, it's the forepaw that have the very long, long claws, just as with grizzlies. The forepaw, the forepaw claws and grizzlies are really long, and they're very short on the, the others. And there's also another possibility, the Malaysian sun bear. And here's its distribution, you can see there indicated. Now you can see where a bipedal standing bear could possibly be mistaken for an upright, dark-colored, about man-sized hominid. But, but that can be a pretty singular, pretty unusual view, point of view. I mean, otherwise they look kind of funny when they're standing on their, on their hind legs. Okay. And as we can see, that distribution is simplified. Here's the actual distribution, but in fact, we look at that area of Con, uh, Kantum province here in this right in here, you can see that there are still uh, moon bears uh, present. Okay, here's a close up of its paws. Notice the much rounder heel. Now, this, there's a lot of individual variation in this, but this would be looking at the bottom of a, now I have to think about it, of a right foot. Of a right foot, no, that's. A left foot, thank you. <laughs> you can get looking up and down and back and forth the tracks. The point is, this is the inside toe. The inside toe of the bear is the short toe. It's like our thumb. It only, well, our, our toe as well, except ours is just oversized. But the thumb and the big toe only have two bones, two phalanges, and all the rest have three. So the bear paw is kind of like a, more like a hand with a shorter thumb on the inside. And the longer, largest toe usually is on the outside. And they often walk kind of with this pigeon toed. They roll off a bigger toe as they push off. And you can see also, notice the contrast in the length of the claws in the forepaw and the hindpaw. And notice the three digits here. Notice the tufts of hair sticking out between the toes there. Okay, so here's just the skeleton to show. So here we're looking down on uh, two left feet, looking up from above. So you can see the relationship with the ankle bone and the heel bone here. You know, notice the very short tarsals and the very short metatarsals and relatively long toes of the bear. The shortest digit on the inside, longest, well, relatively longest. Just depends on how you twist it a little bit there. As opposed to the human with the hominid configuration. I mean, this, this was a divergent digit. It's, has a differential set of muscles of its own. It's now bound to the others by a deep uh, ligament, but it has all the, all the legacy and hallmarks, historical hallmarks, anatomically speaking, of a diversion of toe. Now, had we the good fortune of more than one footprint, this is why whenever people, you, know, you all bring me up pictures to look at, my first question is, did you have a succession of tracks? Could you find, find a succeeding right and left alternating bipedal trackway? Uh, because when all you have is just that one window to look through, your, your, your potential for interpretation becomes somewhat limited or more constrained. But if we had a, a good trackway, you'd see the alternating pattern of rights and lefts. Even if these were overstep registers, which happen, it would usually be, or it would always be, now think about it for a minute, usually you have a situation where, <clears throat> well, there's two possibilities, where if the, the if, if, as that gentleman had suggested, it was a bear stepping on, let's take his idea of a bear forepaw stepping on a hindpaw. Well, that wouldn't happen because if the forepaw is forward, right, the hindpaw is always going to step on the forepaw, the, the, uh, the leading forepaw. So either you have a forepaw in the fore with an overlapping hindpaw, in which case the toes of the hindpaw will leave a clear impression. Or you have an overstep with the forepaw in the back and the hindpaw then being broadened by the forepaw as it steps forward and then partially obliterates the toes of the forepaw by superimposition. But because the bear's heel is usually tapered, 
almost always you'll get in that situation uh, an extraneous toe sticking off to the side. In my book, if you've read, there's an example of a, a nice set of grizzly tracks that were found in Montana that Peter Byrne uh, posted in his uh, newsletter as a possible Sasquatch track. Well, that was not very good form on his part because it revealed he doesn't understand the interpretation of tracks because you can see the uh, extraneous toes on the side very easily. And the forepaw, as you can see here, had, tends to have a concavity on that trailing edge. And so instead of having a very characteristically rounded heel outline, that's, that's the hallmark of a hominoid footprint, you have this bean shape with the indentation on the back side. Okay, easy to, I mean, if, if there's enough clarity, it's, it's quite easy to, to represent that. Well, I wanted another opinion, so I'm sitting there kind of vacillating. Well, gee, is it bear or is it hominid? So I sent um, the images to two experts. These are the two uh, co-chairs of the Asiatic Black Bear Expert Team for the IUCN, the International Union for Conservation, something, something, something. I don't know, I'm terrible with, with uh, acronyms. But these people spend lots and lots of time in the field dealing with bears in the wild, and they know their stuff. And uh, I sent them the pictures, and they didn't think they were bear. Uh, they sent me these images for, for reference. So you can see here the very narrow heel. You can see this kind of triplet I'm talking about. Oftentimes these toes even are bound together. They're slightly webbed. They're syndactylous. And this is very characteristic. Sometimes even the, the marginal toes leave very faint imprints. And you'll see just those one, two, three right in a row, a little triplet. It's a real good uh, thing to look for. And then uh, another set that was sent by the other researcher a little more artistically rendered here. So a slightly rounder heel, it looks like. But you can still see the toe configuration with that very characteristic um, appearance. So by comparison, you know, just really doesn't quite, uh, quite match up. Here are a couple of sun bear um, uh, tracks. This one was kind of blurry upon enlargement, but again, just to show. Now this one was interesting because it has a little longer profile has a little more rounded heel, or, or a, a, a straighter back, longer heel segment here. Still has that triplet, the very short marginal toes though, and the characteristic claws evident here, kind of coming up to this little point, like a chevron. Now, uh, the one gentleman, and I've forgotten his name, let me back, back here, uh, Garcellus, uh, who's up in Minnesota, he drew my attention to a paper that was recently presented and is in press now, describing a new species, or at least a new presence, the new uh, uh, occurrence of a species down in the Andes. And this was a very odd looking footprint, four toes visible, and this real evident constriction. But he said at the presentation at the meetings, there was a lot of controversy whether this was actually the real McCoy or somebody hoaxing footprints to draw attention to this region for conservation purposes. So I thought that was interesting that they're arguing about hoaxed or real bear footprints in, in, uh, in bear conservation conferences. So, so I did some quick and dirty tracings of, of various footprints. Now this was my interpretation, and obviously it's uh, open to some variance of opinion. Uh, so we've got the, the footprint the, in question here. This is that uh, one more interesting looking moon bear. Interesting in the sense that it seems to kind of converge a little bit. And this is a um, American, North American black bear. They tend to have decidedly more broad footprints to length ratios. I left the claws off of this. This was a tracing from a figure where the claws didn't show up. And sometimes they don't. That's another point to me. Black bears dig in the spring and they'll wear the claws right down to the quick. And so you can very calmly find footprints of black bear that have no sign of claws. The lack of claws is not an indicator that you're not working with the bear. Uh, 